Welcome to the Art of Healing podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to helping you connect with your mind, body, and spirit. This is Charlize, physician and Reiki master, and thank you so much for joining me. I would like to remind you that although I'm a physician, the information you receive in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. You can find my full disclaimer at my website, www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. If you like what you hear on this podcast, sign up for my weekly newsletter, check your show notes for more information and for the link to sign up. Thank you. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Art of Healing podcast, which will also be a YouTube video, which we are going to discuss all things hormones. So hormones 101. And I am reason why I'm doing this because one of the most common uh, complaint that my patients approach me with my well, new patients and, and my current patients is they'll say they want their hormones checked. And the older I get and the longer I'm in practice, I'm starting to understand user bias from the patient side and from the physician side. So um, when a patient tells me I want my hormones checked, um, it's a little scary because I'm like, it's, there's thousands of hormones. Which ones are we checking? But as I dig deeper with my patients, often what they're telling me is that they have brain fog, fatigue, muscle point, pain, infertility, uh, menopausal symptoms, low libido. So they're having a long list of symptoms and, and they, they intuitively know it's time to check something as far as the hormones, but they don't know what to check. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to cover this topic over a few episodes. I would definitely recommend, um, if you aren't on my email list, in your show notes or in your video notes, you'll see a link that you can sign up um, because I'll send you each one of these episodes weekly um, by email. The episodes come out Monday and you'll get your email probably by Friday. Um, and the I've, I planned this out and I figured the best way was to chop this up into little pieces. We'll cover some of the better known hormones. And then hopefully you can use that information if you do think you need your hormones checked and, and how to approach it. Cause I think on the patient side, if you understand what you're after, um, and what kind of symptom you're trying to approach, um, it helps you speak better with your physician. And then just really, I want to share my approach when someone tells me they want their hormones checked. I want to share my approach with how we do that. So for this first one, we're going to cover the hormones, um, in the lower body. Now, physiologically, if we were approaching this from a classical internal medicine approach, we would be going the exact opposite direction. But we're going to do this from an energy medicine approach. So we're going to cover the hormones that are in the first, the second, and if we can get to the third chakra in this podcast, it's a lot of hormones. So we may have to chop it up even more. Um, and then the later episodes, we'll get into the fourth, the fifth uh chakra hormones. Uh, some of those may take one by themselves, one episode, because it is a lot of major hormones. But again, I did want you to have this reference for yourself. Um, if you're choosing to work with your doctor, or if you're considering signing up for one of my uh, healing programs, in which we were able to do a comprehensive panel to check all of these hormones and way more, which is so fun. Okay, let's get started. So starting with the first chakra, um, you'll probably have some working knowledge of the chakra system, which derives from Ayurveda, which localizes energy centers, which is, literally translates to will of light to certain locations in the human body. There are um, there are um, minor chakras as well, but for the purposes of this talk, we'll be focusing just on the major. So we're going to start with the first. And just to create that map for you, the first chakra, Muladhara, is located deep in the body, very low. It's in front of the tailbone, behind of the pubic bone up front. 
the so it sits very deep in the pelvis. Um, and getting us started, this is going to be a little bit of blending. And because um, as I was doing my research, and I've been practicing for many years, um, and been making this bridge between um, the science and the energy medicine, it's not a lot to really assist you to map this out. I found like a few papers from some um, research that was being done in India that uh, related Muladhara to a nerve plexus deep in the pelvis. But in any case, so we'll have to merge one and two a little bit. And so uh, Muladhara, that's the first. And then the sacral chakra, which is the second, which is the energy center that sits above that uh, in front of the spine, beneath the belly button, but behind. So it's deep within the body. So um, the hormones that would be governing this area, the gland system, so this is going to be sex assignment at birth dependent. So um, the hormones of this area depend on if you are XX or XY. So if you have ovaries or testes. So we'll be starting with those. So the first one we'll start with is estrogen. So many of you know, my folks say, I want my hormones checked. And um, a lot of times they're actually wanting to know their estrogen. Although it used to be, um, you know, only women that wanted to know the estrogen levels. Many men are finding that they need to know their estrogen levels and their estrogen levels are getting out of control. Very interesting what's happening with that. So estrogen, which is produced primarily by the ovaries and its main job is in reproduction. So um, as it's being made, it's helping what's called follicles and it's basically eggs to develop. Um, It controls the release of those. Um, And there's actually um, three main types. There's estrogen one, there's estrogen two, and then estrone. And so when we're um, wanting our estrogen levels checked, um, and I've, I've had to learn over the years that um, we, we want to really get the panel. We want to get the variation. We don't just want an estrogen because it's not very helpful. Um, so estrogen's role in the body, in addition to reproduction, it has uh, influence on metabolism, influence on the liver function. Um, it is both in men and women. So men do have estrogen as well. Um, hopefully not too much. And um, in its main job is, of course, to help maintain a healthy pregnancy. But of course, um, if you aren't making estrogen, so if your estrogen levels are low, why would that be? So um, this is one that I really like to be very careful with my own patients, uh, because is it physiologic that your estrogen's low? So if you are female, or female assigned at birth, and your estrogen is low, you know, how old are you? And are we having other symptoms that let us know that you are going through the pre-programmed change of life where your reproductive years are ending? Um, So of course, one reason that estrogen could be going low is menopause. Um, And again, I'm very careful discussing menopause because I do feel that it has been such a medicalized and pathologized uh, process. Uh, and it is simply this, the process of puberty, which you became reproductive, it's going the other way. And it does have some benefits. It's not all bad. It's actually not meant to be bad at all. For women, this could be an extremely empowering time in your life. Um, It's a time where Mother Nature tells you that, you know, you no longer have to have children. You don't have to bear any more children. Um, And you're not um, you're not tuned in to the moon cycle quite that way anymore. But it opens the door to a lot of freedom. So I do like to tell my patients that we need to discuss menopause as a fact and change of life programmed into your DNA. Some things may have ushered it in a little bit sooner, but um, this is a process you're meant to go through. So we need to figure out how to make the process tolerable and enjoyable in a time of life that you're empowered. This is what it is. It's not a pathology. So if you're having symptoms in it, we need to deal with what's going on with those rather than just suppressing with medications. Um, And uh, then in men, Um, we would expect them to have naturally low estrogen levels. They do make some, but it should be low. And it's a process that comes from the testes and the liver and the adrenal glands. Um, And what we would expect is that overall they should be low. We expect high estrogen levels during pregnancy. 
Um, I have been learning quite a bit and even with my own journey about being dominant in estrogen. So if your metabolism needs a little tweaking and in your liver and your ovaries and your adrenal glands aren't talking to each other very well, you may be overproducing estrogen as a woman when you're not pregnant. And um, the issues it can cause include breast changes, tenderness, at the very worst, may be increasing your risk of breast cancer, um, growth in the reproductive system, so fibroids, uh, and this is a huge topic, are fibroids um, and fibroids relationship to your estrogen and fibroids relationship to your overall inflammation. So um, if you're a female assigned at birth in elevated estrogen, you might be seeing some of those changes. So it's worth checking all three of those estrogens. If you are male assigned at birth and you request your hormones checked and one of those is an estrogen, and your estrogen is coming back elevated for male. This is very important because this is definitely a warning sign, not that you need more testosterone necessarily. It, I mean, depends not necessarily, but it's a warning sign that your metabolism is under strain. It's a big warning sign. So um, if a male has high estrogen, which um, he is likely to feel in a number of ways, from fatigue to body aches to mood changes, disrupted sleep, and definitely the inability to do as much as he used to do as he's younger. Um, so if you're starting to notice that, then it's time to actually dig deeper, not into necessarily the sex hormone part that we're discussing. Well, you need that too. But, um, and later we'll get into, we need to find out what's going on with your insulin, your glucose, your blood sugar average, what's happening with your liver. And we need to discuss your metabolism going the other direction. That's actually probably where we're going to find an issue. And then um, the next hormone in that area would be progesterone. The next hormone is progesterone. So progesterone is well coming from that uh, same sort of energy center, but depending on your sex assigned at birth, um, it is a hormone and it's actually a steroid hormone. So that means that the building blocks of this hormone um, and actually all of these will actually come from the adrenal glands, not just from the ovaries or testes. And um, progesterone's dominant job is going to be with reproduction. So it's to help the breast develop um, in young women, as well as to nurture um, breastfeeding. And then it also supports the uterus during a pregnancy to help it relax. Um, and it, and I forgot to mention with estrogen in women, these hormones are going to have, um, you know, a natural cycle. If a woman is having um, periods on a regular basis, these hormones will rise and they'll fall and they'll rise and they'll fall depending on where she is on her cycle. Um, progesterone levels and men make progesterone as well, but of course a very low level because of their physiology and they're not having um, that kind of shift monthly. Although I have talked to other folks and I agree. I think a lot of us agree that we do think that men have monthly cycles. Um, although they don't have anything like a period, I, I think that there is something that happens with them, whether or not they, they feel it or not. Um, but anyway, that's a, maybe the topic to talk about later, um, uh, the men's moon cycle. But um, so progesterone um is a hormone that um, when it's not really needed in women, it is going to sink down to a fairly low level. And it is, che you can check it with blood work and you can also check it with what's called a Dutch test, which um, I offer in my practice. Um, and it is good to know, particularly if you're trying to get pregnant, um, if your your doctor may need that, if you're anticipating a pregnancy. Um, and then also um, when your progesterone is low, you definitely will feel a sense of unwell, aching, poor sleep. And depending on what's going on with your body, um, you might benefit from, a, you know, either a small replacement or just making sure we analyze it against your estrogen and your testosterone, along with some other labs as well to see what would be optimal. Um, 
So I do want to point out, because if you're somewhat hormone savvy and you're you know, already seeing a functional medicine specialist, you're going to notice I'm purposely leaving out FSH and LH. I am because they are in a whole different chakra. Um, so a lot of times when people want to be checked for menopause, those are the ones that they're actually asking for. And I am purposely leaving those out because I just want to walk us through the process of how all of this is unified. So, um, so we know so far the estrogen and the progesterone. So next of the hormones that we'll discuss is testosterone. Um, testosterone is present in both sexes uh, throughout the duration of their life. But of course, the difference is going to be in the uh, amounts and depending on what phase of life. Uh, most of my male patients, when they say uh, hormone testing, I believe this is what they're referencing is they're wanting to know what their testosterone level is. So um the testosterone circulates in the blood, both in men and women, but of course in men, the primary source will be the testes and um, it serves functions in both sexes. So um, women keep a smaller amount, but of course that level will fluctuate and change depending on pregnancy, reproductive status. In men, the level tends to I'm just like in kids, it's low in both, but then in puberty, it tends to go up and then it's going to be the highest in men in the early twenties, late teens, early twenties. Um, then it begins to naturally take a decline throughout the rest of your life. Um, testosterone levels, um, can be high from disease process. So in women, if we're seeing a high testosterone along with some of the other metabolites like DHEA, this is worrisome for uh, reproductive issues like polycystic ovarian syndrome, which the title of that name, it's not really like covers all of it because beyond the reproductive issues, that condition can cause cardiovascular disease, um, prediabetes, insulin resistance, and not to mention it does cause skin changes, hair changes, as well as um, mood changes because of the dysregulated hormone production. Um, and then if we see elevated testosterone, we start to think of a pathology or if a man is taking testosterone supplement, either by injection or supplement. Beyond that, low testosterone is actually much more complicated than we treat it. Um, so many of my patients anticipate getting a testosterone checked when it's low, you just start some. Um, when you get testosterone levels, the lab values are highly variable. It's a huge range. So um, some men will see they're, they're on the low end of normal and automatically assume that they should be on testosterone. So it's really not so simple. You need to know the other hormone panels. You need to know blood sugars. You need to know liver function, kidney function. Um, you need to know weight, uh, blood pressure pulse. Um, you need to take all of that into account before you truly diagnose hypogonad hypogonadism, which is low testosterone. And even if you do make that diagnosis, it's still not so simple because if it turns out you're having metabolic dysregulation like prediabetes, uh, obesity, adding more testosterone may not help. You might actually do better working on uh, your weight loss, working on lowering your inflammatory markers, working on increasing your physical endurance will go further as far as improving your testosterone. So that was um, an important point that I often have to educate my patients on that in, in hormone replacement, and I'm not uh, saying I'm totally against it. It's just that it's a individualized decision. There could be benefits, but it's not always the answer. And in all of these, hormone replacement isn't always risk-free. We have, it's, it's medication. So you have to know what your risks are. Is it safe for you? Is it something that you really need to undertake? So I hope that hormone review was helpful. We only covered part of the hormones today, and this isn't an all-inclusive list. We just went with the ones that are most common, the ones that you can actually get tested. Um, 
And I do hope this is helpful in however you're proceeding with your care. Um, If you'll tune in next week, we'll continue through the chakra system and covering more of those hormones. And we'll try to get to as many as we can, although this may take more than two episodes to cover. Um, Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Don't forget, if you aren't a member of my newsletter list, you probably might want to because every week I do email out some helpful information. You can contact me there and I always send out links to the episodes so that if you miss it or you miss next week's, check your email and right there, you can easily download it and listen on the go. Um, I will see you next week where we will continue our journey through the hormones or the endocrine system. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Art of Healing podcast. Once again, this is Charlize. You can find out more about me at www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. Did you know I have a blog as well as online courses? Check your show notes to sign up for more information about Healing Arts Health and Wellness. Thank you. Please feel free to share this episode with your friends, family, and loved ones.